guys hope you are doing great and safe uh, first of all before starting my uh, presentation I would thank uh, the organizer sponsors uh, Omar Santos and yet another security community yes for their supports uh, this is my honor to speak at Defcon Writing Village and I'm really excited about this so this talk I think is really interesting because we are going to take a look at the mobile network which using by mobile operators and many other entities all around the world this area of test contains many many valuable information like user location user unique information and phone number uh, uh, related data the important thing in this talk is that we are going to review all possible bypassing methods because I think you may hear much about telecom and SS7 vulnerabilities and hacking. So the purposes of this talk are to address all those bypassing techniques from a red teamer perspective. If you are ready, let's get started. So first I want to introduce myself. I'm Ali Abdullahi, a cybersecurity enthusiast with over eight years of experience in a variety of fields trying to make the world a safer place. I'm an instructor at Hacking9 and an active researcher and bug hunter. I'm a regular speaker and trainer at famous cybersecurity and hacking global conferences like COCON. Uh, Typhoon Con, Texas Cyber Summit, OWASP, AppSec Days, uh, Confidence, and this year proudly announced that except Red Team Village, I'm a speaker and trainer at Aerospace and AppSec Villages. Uh, as you can see, there are many security incidents and in news about vulnerabilities and hacking mobile infrastructure including uh, protocols, communications, and interconnections. In the top left corner, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a news regarding attacking financial organizations and the ATM infection by exploiting SS7 protocol. In this case, hackers try to intercept authorized payment phone SMS to exploit them. So, because one of the most usable attacks in SMS interception and spoofing, in the lower left corner, you can see a news about using telecom protocol to target UK Metro Bank in 2019. In this scenario, uh, hackers track and intercept text messages to gain unauthorized access to banking accounts. In the top right corner, you can find uh, another news regarding fixing SS7 and telecom vulnerabilities in US, which would be very helpful to secure the communications and subscribers' private info. So the last one is uh, news about sending tweets via SMS, which patched by Twitter to avoid unwanted and harmful tweets and combating malicious actors. So now the question is that what types of attacks and uh, vulnerabilities are threatened in mobile networks and subscribers and why they are important to red teamers? So the first possible attack category is subscriber data leakage. Uh, actually, subscriber data leakage is a vital part of for red teamers to set up their next steps and scenarios. In this part of the scenarios, they will retrieve subscribers in C number and other stuff. Next one is network data leakage, which is very important for red teamer uh, to understand what's happening inside mobile core network and uh, what kind of devices are in place there. Finding mobile subscribers location is one of the most critical issue. So 
Based on this attack, criminal can retrieve subscribers CGI or cell global identifier and convert it to MCC mobile country code, MNC mobile network code, and LIC or LAC location area code and cell ID or CID to find the actual uh, sector which the subscriber connected to. Sniffing is the next scenario which points to voice and SMS interceptions. Spoofing is another test, uh, test case which is very interesting because if you want to take advantage of it as a red teamer you may perform a call with fake caller ID or send a SMS via fake number. The last attack category is fraud. Red teamers can perform malicious uses to requests, call redirection, SIM card profile swapping, etc. to done fraud uh, attack categories. Now, we are, <clears throat> we are starting our bypassing journey one by one. So first of all, we are going to talk about the radio segment, which is the most accessible part of a mobile network. As you can see here, we have uh, a big picture of radio access network or RAN in different technologies. BTS in 2G or GSM, NodeB in 3G or UMTS technologies, and eNodeB in 4G or LTE networks. So there is a connection between cell towers to the core networks and based on your traffic type means voice or data. The data pass through to CS core or circuit switch network or packet switch network. In this picture, we have a 5G architecture. Most of elements are different. But from a red team, a red teamer point of view, uh, security flaws and opportunities in traditional technologies are still available here. Please note that 5G has its uh, own vulnerabilities, and because of IP backbone and software usage in this sector generation, many other doors open to hackers. Now we are going to review all possible vectors for a red teamer when facing with a mobile network. First is mobile RAN, radio access network. So red teamer needs to be in radio field and needs to have some sort of tools like uh, hardware and software. Second is signaling network or CS. So to do this, red teamer needs to have access to the signaling network. Red Teamer can buy the access uh, from dark web even uh, or officially from telco providers all around the world or based on the contract retrieved from the network owner. Data network is more easier because most of attacks can perform from the internet and some of them from a signaling point. Okay, now we are going to review security mechanism in radio access network or radio security. The first one is mobile device registration using IMEI. Second is enabling ciphering algorithms to fight against interception and man in the middle. Third item is using only LTE or LTE advanced or some uh, other advanced mobile technologies uh, instead of traditional mobile core networks in 2G and UMTS. So as you can see here, uh, this is the big picture of a radio access network and you can see it is in LTE uh, generation, fourth generation. Um, radio access network in this technology uh, called EUTRAN or EVOLVE uh, UTRAN and the e node beads are here they are connected to each other using X2 interfaces and uh, connected to the core network using S1 interfaces okay why 
using IMEI policies actually to fight against phone smuggling, lawful and security monitoring, tracking stolen devices and criminals or the most uh, usage of uh, mobile device registration or IMEI based policies. Okay, now with the help of um, the Motorola Phone C115 and 118 and Osmocom BB software, we can set an invalid or fake or even duplicate IMEI and set up a call to test network reactions. So this is the bypass, the first bypass in radio access network. According to this screenshot here, Network sent identity request to my phone and the type of identity was IMEI. So I replied to it using an invalid IMEI set to all zero. So the network accepted my invalid IMEI because ciphering procedure is completed. So there are some types of ciphering keys like KC, address, and random number in radio access network which uh, harden the radio network to avoid active sniffing and they always store in HLR or HSS in core network. HLR or HSS as subscriber database has um, components call AUC or authentication center which responsible for ciphering and authentication procedures. To bypass and get this information we are going to targeting AUC in HLR or HSS by abusing SS7 and signaling access as a roaming partner. As you can see I sent a malicious SS7 map SAI or send authentication info uh, to targeted core network from SS7 network to retrieve ciphering information and the network respond me via RAND, SRS and KC values in clear text. Another security mechanism is using uh, advanced technologies to bring highest quality and performance, having more security and privacy in core and radius segments and other factors like voice over LT, VoLT, flexibility, etc. Okay, so uh, let's review uh, first round of bypassing method. Totally, there is a general way, and it is downgrading subscribers to traditional technologies like 3G and 2G, which are vulnerable. To perform downgrading, we need to use a signal jammer. Uh, security in circuit switch network. Um, there are two main security uh, solutions in this segment of network. And the first is using SMS home routing, and the second one is signaling firewall. Home routing acts as a proxy, and the definition of home router is to hiding subscriber MC number, which is very valuable information to perform um, other hacking scenarios from a red teamer perspective. As you can see, a red teamer requests to receive MC number from HLR HSS and the HSS respond with real value however home router changed the value with a fake one so the main issue is that how we can detect if home routing is enabled or not just need to send two or more malicious SS7 messages like send routing info for SM or SRI for SM. If we receive 
different responses, it means that SMS home routing is in place. As you can see here, Red Teamer or our tester send um, two different messages or the same message two times and responses are different as you can see and the main issue is SMS router here because in both cases uh, HLR HSS respond with a real number however SMS router change the actual values In telecommunications, we have three types of GTs or global title which act as IP address. MS ISDN consists of MCC or Mobile Country Code, NDC and SN. MC consists of MCC, MNC or Mobile Network Code and MSIN. Uh, MGT consists of MCC, NDC and MSIN. As you can see, Red Teamer can use MGT number and a valid random MZ number to request other information regarding the targeted mobile number and it's really MZ. Signaling Firewall Mobile operators use uh, signaling firewall to protect their signaling infrastructure. Signal packet inspection, filtering, white and black listing. Bypassing signaling firewall. So, to bypass these kind of firewalls, we need just to playing with TCAP. What is TCAP? TCAP is a SS7 subprotocol and it's like TCP. TCAP enables the deployment of advanced intelligent network services by uh, supporting non circuit related information exchange between uh, signaling points using the SSCP connectionless service. TCAP provides the framework to retrieve information or invoke remote operations and uh, it offers the means for end users in the SS7 network to query another end office and act as the software interface between an SS7 and SS7 point and database services in, or in order to obtain data from the SS7 network. perform bypassing we need to remove application context name from TCAP or sending double operation messages. The application context name or ACN is used for all supported IT TCAP messages ex except abort, abort message. No attempt to retrieve the ACN is made for abort messages. All other supported messages may have a dialog portion containing dialog request, uh, unidirectional dialog, and dialog response PDU from which the ACN is retrieved. If no dialog portion is detected, uh, then the ACN is assumed to be none. The TCAP opcode based routing feature attempts to find the opcode in all supported TCAP messages except a port. These messages must contain uh, invoke or return result uh, stand for last or not last as the first component. If not, the opcode is assumed to be none. So, uh, Removing ap application context name from TCAP message. To start the procedure, we need to remove dialog request section from our malicious SS7 message. Then um, there will not app application context name to point to 
malicious SS7 Mac message or mobile application part message. So this is the second bypassing method, sending double operation message. Actually, uh, most of signaling firewall block or accept uh, a message based on message type. So each signaling message has its own uh, opcode and it's a vital number. According to the picture, Red Teamer is trying to put a legitimate SS7 map message opcode in the first step, and uh, so it seems a legitimate one, and then put a malicious SS7 map message. So signaling firewall check just the first operation code, which is pointing to a legitimate operation. After that, uh, the component inside the core network replied uh, to signaling firewall or actually a red timer here in this scenario and uh, trying to keep session, which is legitimate and valid, and ask to send the message again. So, a red timer says thanks, and this is what he wants. And still, the, the whole session is still available and legitimate as well. So, HLR, HSS, or our uh, signaling point inside our core network uh, will respond with real subscriber MZ number and network information. And this is uh, what actually our red teamer wants. As I mentioned, in past several years, mobile network operator and telecom providers turn against uh, telecom and especially SS7 attacks and enable many security mechanisms. In this talk, I try to explain all possible uh, bypassing techniques in all network segments in telecom infrastructures. We must consider that red teaming is very important because in these networks, we are dealing with millions of user private data. Be careful that blind hardening and buying security appliances or software because they are not fair enough. We must have behavior analysis and continuous monitoring as complementary solutions. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm still available for any questions. I hope you enjoyed this talk and please in touch with me